Hello everyone and welcome back to Run It Up. Run It Up number 27. Today we are playing a $25 six max tournament on ultimatepoker.com. That's right, presented by ultimatepoker.com. We're playing ultimate poker. Oh yes, this is a wonderful, a wonderful day here at Team Run It Up. Uh, we are starting today with $215.46. Uh, that's right, now we have ourselves a whiteboard. No longer have to use those damn annotations. Uh, so yeah, this is about a pretty normal sit and go. We've played these a couple times before. Two spots will pay, and uh, yeah, first place I think is a hundred. Let's pop up this lobby here. First place is a hundred. Third, second place is forty. So we're gonna have to get top two to cash. I think if we won though, we would be at a bankroll peak. Yeah, I think we would. So we should win. I think <laughs> that would be fun. So if you guys haven't been uh, keeping track lately, we've been playing a couple of, we're playing actually kind of a variety of sessions, did a variety of videos. I did a, I've been doing videos covering my uh, start in poker called Life and Times of Jay Carver. I've done four of those. I did one of those yesterday. So check that out if you haven't seen those yet. And uh, prior to that, I did a bunch of like streaming over the weekend. And uh, we did a pretty good job streaming that one session for Run It Up. I think we had our biggest win ever, which was like 120 something dollars. That was a pretty, pretty solid session. So if you haven't seen that, go check those out. Uh, not really planning to do anything particularly notable here. I don't recognize these three players. Uh, do you even lift? I do recognize, although I, I don't remember where I recognize him from. And Luck is Real is the, the <laughs> fan of the show. Luck is Real. Uh, we've had several conversations about that nick the screen name before. I'm a very big fan of that. And uh, I think uh, Luck is Real plays pretty well. He won one of the sit and goes in an earlier video. Uh, I think we saw him before very correctly push fold. And um, I think he's just like a, a, good, a good sit and go player. Don't know the other players. But uh, we do know our fellow Master Chief avatar over there. Uh, I think we can min raise here with Ace Eight. Don't see why not. <laughs> uh, I think we can raise uh, a decent Ace here. Not loving it, but I think it's fine. Ten five four flop. Uh, interesting decision between betting and checking. I think I'm going to decide to check actually. And I, if you've watched these videos, you know I'm not a big fan of checking. But I think it's going to be hard to get him to fold a better hand than this. We could definitely argue for betting flop and turn and maybe river, but I think I just like check calling. Uh, we have the best hand here, good percentage of the time. Ten of diamonds is a better than bad card. I mean, it's, it's better than a brick. We have turned in that flush draw, and it's also a little bit less likely that he has a ten. If he bets here, I'm still going to have to call. We could definitely be behind to like a five or like pocket seven, something like that. But uh, I think calling is fine. Could argue to check raise, but I don't really think that makes a lot of sense. And I don't think that really accomplishes a ton. Ace on the river is an interesting card. If we were ahead, we're probably uh, still ahead now. I don't think betting makes sense. He would call with a hand like pocket sevens maybe. But it uh, looks like we're going to ship this pot here. All right, so we do ship that there. Don't see what he gets. To, we don't get to see what he had, but uh, feel pretty confident that we probably had the best hand. Gonna fold this nine ten offsuit under the gun here. Plans to go up every four minutes, <laughs> so we got ourselves a bit of a turbo here. I don't really know if there's much of a difference between sit and goes and cash as far as what you guys like, but uh, I kind of like mixing it up. You know, I, I realize that our edge is probably bigger when we're playing deeper stack cash games, but. Every once in a while, you know, the kids got to gamble a little bit. <laughs> we got to play these sit and goes, uh, and I think people like enjoy these sit and goes more anyway. I feel like for some reason people like uh, the sit and goes. So I guess while we have, oh well, the hand is over. But I've got some ideas for stuff we can do today. I, I want to try out that uh, the wild card hand that we were talking about yesterday, the <laughs> the ultimatepoker.com ultimate guessing game as to what Jason ultimately has. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by ultimatepoker.com. Uh, maybe something like that we'll, we'll do in this episode. Uh, I think that could be entertaining. Uh, I would just have to like hide the cards from you guys or something like that. I don't know how I'll see the cards. Oh, I know how we can do that. All right, we're going to figure this live here. Now that we're officially sponsored by Ultimate Poker, I feel like we are going to have to get a production assistant. <laughs> we're going to have to increase the production quality of this show. I will no longer, I probably should no longer just be like, hey, let's do this. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to look into that perhaps. But uh, we're going to have to use this calculator thing. 
we'll use this we'll use this calculator image to uh, to cover up the whole card. So I know what we have, but you guys you guys will have to uh, you'll have to calculate it for, <laughs> for yourselves. Oh my god, that was terrible. That was terrible. All right, three seven offset here on the button. Probably not going to be the the wild card hand. We'll have to just like. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna decide. How am I gonna decide what hand to play? I'll have to, maybe, maybe at like the start of the next hand, I'll have to just start with the cards covered up, and then if the hand is playable, then you'll just have, we'll just have to go from there. <laughs> the ultimate, the ultimate guessing game. <laughs> uh, so what's new with you, people on the internet? I feel like uh, I feel like we've done. I feel like it's been very busy today. Today is like the first day, and I don't even know how long that I actually feel like I might have time off. I might be able to just relax. Oh, let's get the calculator ready to go. Because I was in California, I was in LA, and then I was still trying to like get all the things that this is not going to be the wild card hand. And also, you can even see there's a four in it. So <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't like pocket aces, and you guys got to just see. Uh, so it was very, it was very wild. Uh, a couple of weeks. I mean, anytime the World Series wraps up, it's always a lot of like accounting. Got to make sure everything is square and all this little stuff. So there was a lot of that, and then just generally, I uh, had a lot of just things going on. Went to California for the charity event, and uh, looks like there's going to be our very first all in here. Looks like Ace Jack's going to be a pretty big favorite, especially now. Oh, oh, that is uh, <laughs> that is dirty. So uh, a little bit of run good for for 1.21 gigawatts over there. All right, so five-handed. We've got one person that is dominant chip lead, but we are in second place. I think we can raise this in the cutoff. We could have done this as a wild card hand, I suppose, but it's not really like I don't think it would have been that interesting. Fold around to our friend. Luck is real over there. All right, 90 chips. Let's get the calculator. All ready to go, just in case we get help, we get dealt something big. No, not this case. Also, I guess now the blinds are so high that we might want to save that for a cash game, because this, these, uh, especially now that the blinds are already sixty-one twenty. Like, you know, oh, oh, it's the wild card hand. Jake Carver moves all in. What can he have? <laughs> and then it's just a matter of like constructing what my range is, obviously. So not think, don't think that maybe at this point we might have already missed our ultimate guessing hand <laughs> for this for this video. So we'll have to see about that, I guess. Folds around to do you even lift, and we're just going to fold the queen six in the big. Don't think we can do much else there. I don't think we're even close to being able to call. Ace king, we'll be doing something this time though. Uh, I think if somebody raises, we'll just shove. If it folds to us, I think we have a semi-interesting decision between limping, raising, and, you know, shoving is on the table, but I don't think we'd want to shove. Do you even lift folds? So this is the most interesting situation. I think uh, I think this is one of those spots where I would do different things at different points against different opponents and against a guy who I have actually zero. I don't think he's shown down one hand. I think it looks weakest to raise like this. He does call though. Pretty good flop for us because if he had a pocket pair, he'd probably have just raised re raised pre flop. So I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I think we can bet pretty small and. Uh, not not fold if he shoves. I mean, I, I would be. <laughs> I'm not loving this, but I I really don't think he has a pocket pair too often. He ha he often has like ace high or something like that that just decide not to shove pre flop. So we're in pretty good shape here. We're gonna need to dodge a ten or a four or a king to a chop. Nice. We do pick up that there. Felt pretty good about that. I I actually I actually don't hate his bluff. It just uh. You know, his bluff does work some percentage of the time. It just doesn't make a ton of sense, you know, given that he didn't re-raise preflop. So given how short stacked we were, I think I think it would have made more sense if he had been if he had been the aggressor preflop. Like let's say we did limp and uh, let's say let's say we limped and it went limp check and then we bet flop and he shoved. I like that better because we haven't shown strength, but because we raised flop and then bet tiny. I don't think his bluff works too often, but I don't hate it. Like I understand what he's trying to do because it's a hard flop for us to connect with. But I, uh, I think it's just like not optimally timed, you know.
Anyway, so we have 3,000 chips, and I'm going to do my best to hold on to them. I feel like in these sit and goes, not that there's been a significant sample, but I feel like we quite often get to 3K, and yet we don't cash. So I'm going to try today. We're going to try to see if we can if we can ride the train here to uh, at least second place. I would love nothing more than to get first and run it up, run it up. That's it. <laughs> uh, I think... I think we could argue uh, either raising or folding this. I think this hand is good enough to raise. This guy hasn't been too wild pre-flop. We know luck is real as the shovey type, so this makes that is a strike against us raising this, and we do know do you even lift is capable of shoving. So those things all do impact this. Those things impact this to be a fold, but I think all in all, we probably still show a profit risking 240 to win 180, you know, and post-flop we win more often than not. So I think it's one of those close decisions that I'm not in love with, but I think is okay. If luck is real shoves, we have to call on the big blind here. He's shoving 11 big blinds. We have, uh, or sorry, 9 big blinds. Math is difficult. <laughs> luck is real and math is difficult. <laughs> uh, but looks like we just got to walk here, so I'll take that. The two master chiefs, the ninja, and then the unknown, the unknown gigawatt over there. I'm probably going to end up limping if it's folded to me. Don't see a reason not to limp. I mean, I know we have a hand that's not great, but I don't think we've been... N nothing has happened to discourage me from trying yet. I think this is a close decision between checking and betting. I think if we bet, there is no chance he folds a hand better than ours. If we check, we potentially open ourselves up to making a mistake, you know, because we have king high, which is not exactly like we have a hand that wants to be bluffed into. But we do have a backdoor flush draw, which has now become a real flush draw. We've now grown up into a teenage flush draw and uh, brick that on the river here. So the question is, does it make more sense to bet or check? If we bet, does he ever fold a four or a five? I don't think so. If we check, does he ever bluff? I mean, if he might, but uh, we probably wouldn't have called. So we lose to a better king high. It's possible that he might have folded that hand because, you know, we, he, but even that he might not even have folded because he, we could have queen jack or whatever else. So I think I actually like how I played that hand despite, you know, A, losing and B, having king deuce. <laughs> I think we, I think we played our king deuce as well as we could there. I like our thought process and our logic, even though we didn't win. I think, uh, I think in these sit and goes, those situations are, are kind of key to win and I feel like more than most people I get myself stuck in weird situations because I don't like to fold but I, I think that was a, a relatively profitable navigation down the how'd you like that a little navigation thing <laughs> it's like a little swimmer thing going on there all right that's fantastic so fold around to luck is real who has uh decumulated to pretty low but he does ship that there blinds have gone up to 100 200 so Looks like there's gonna we're gonna need to <laughs> we're gonna need to run it up here a little bit. We're gonna need the heater. If luck is real shows, we have to just fold. Our hand is just too bad to do anything else. There's not even a question. You know, there's no point no point in wasting time. I'd rather just get more hands in. Don't think we need to sit and wait and fake debate. That doesn't really accomplish. It actually accomplishes literally nothing. It's actually bad for us. It accomplishes playing less hands per hour. So. I don't usually like using the pre-check fold buttons, but against the shove, we just know what we're doing. So I think that's the... I don't think we lose anything by, by doing that. So if you haven't heard, I've, I've referenced it a couple times, I guess, but uh, yesterday I officially announced that... I mentioned it before in this video, but uh, Ultimate Poker is going to be the official sponsor of Run It Up and all these YouTube videos. Uh, King 6 here, I think it's very close to a shove and a fold, and I think it's a fold. I think I would shove slightly better than this, but I think King 6 is bad enough to fold. But uh, yeah, they're going to be sponsoring for the next three months at least. We'll be doing videos pretty much every single day. I have a little bit of leeway for some days. Like, you know, it's not like I committed to making a video every single day to them. But between you and I, I'm probably making a video every day. I've been doing it already now for um, a month or so. I think actually this is probably a very near like a month of straight videos. So if, uh, if you guys have been enjoying them, fantastic news. <laughs> There'll be a month more. There'll be three months more of them. And they're not even going to just be poker. Like, I'm actually quite committed to doing non-poker videos and trying to go do cool things, and we'll obviously be calling with pocket jacks. I call, I call, I call. Phil Helmuth style. 70% here. Pretty good flop for us. We're going to need to sweat a king or some running cards. All right, need to sweat a king or a 10 or a 5. And we dodge that. So it puts us up to chip lead. Thanks to a little bit of little bit of patience there. All right, pressure's on now, boys. 
and 9.2% girls. That's right. Female audience has exploded to 9.2% in the past. Uh, I think we could fold this. Speaking of 9.2%, wow, look at that. That is a coincidence right there. I think I'm going to actually just fold, you know? Let's just fold it. Move on, you know? Do we have to do we have to win every hand? Every hand? You know? Uh, I'm gonna be all in here. I think we could also argue to min raise fold against this guy. I'm actually not even sure what's actually correct. I don't think this guy's been shove happy enough that this is a mistake to raise fold. Like if we raise, we make a mistake when he if, when he shoves hands like Queen Jack, you know, uh King Queen, stuff like that, we have to call this getting the price we're getting. Ooh, we actually are ahead, which I was surprised to see. Need to sweat a queen here. Or a backdoor spades. Just a queen will do it. Full house. Alright, we are in the money. We have ran it up today. That is that is something. So if we can ship this, which would be which would be lovely, we will have won seventy-five dollars profit, which would be sweet. Alright, let's do it, kids. Let's do it. We need it. We need it. We want it. We deserve it. We played good. We were disciplined. We folded the nine deuce offsuit. We just folded it. We just said, no, not this time. Just let it go. Uh, so now we have three. I haven't seen him shove enough preflop to think that this is fine to just fold. Like I want to raise all my buttons at start. I think we haven't had a reason to not raise all our buttons at start. I think uh, I want to discourage him from sticking around on this flop too much, but I still think 400 just accomplishes it. If he has air, I think he just folds. If he doesn't, then if he has anything that's not airy, I don't think he folds, obviously. But all right, so at this point, I don't think he's super strong, but I also don't really want to bet twice because I'm not really sure about that read. He also might have 10 jack every once in a while, though that probably shoves preflop. If he has 9, he's probably not folding now. I think I like best checking back, and maybe we win this on some rivers, aces, kings. 9 is probably not going to do it. I think his most likely hand here is a 9. Uh, I don't really think he has... Maybe once in a while he has, like, king high, like, king... king yeah, king high or ace high, like a bad ace high or king high. But I think his most likely hand is a nine, so I think we just fold this here. I don't think shoving works often enough and all that other stuff. So we could have just folded that preflop, but I think each one of our decisions, if you analyze them when given the information we had at the time, I think each one of them makes sense. I think we just fold this. I defend this sometimes, but I think I think folding that is fine. We don't really have too many opportunities to to be defending here. Blinds are gonna be going up in a minute. Uh, I think I'm going to actually try limping against this guy, heads up. I don't think he'll attack this too much. Uh, I think we get to see a flop a decent percentage of the time. Doesn't look like we're going to get to see a flop this time. This is just a little bit too much. But I'm all right with trying things like this. I mean, we risked 125 chips. Maybe this was slightly worse than raising, but it couldn't have been that much slightly worse than raising. And odds are, had we made it 500, he's probably still going to re-raise. You know, I don't, think that, I don't think that the min raise necessarily induced that. All right. 9-3 suited. We get a walk, which makes me feel... Probably like that he's not, you know, we haven't got, I don't really have the read that this guy is like the super, super must win every pot type. And now that we just limped the last time, I think I still like limping hands like this. But you know what, let's try min raising. We've done, we've done a little bit of both. He did call this. So he's called both times and then he raised the one time. Pretty good flop for us. I mean, we flopped the pair and I don't think that he very often has an ace. He might have a 10, but he shouldn't be too strong here. All right, all those words for a snap fold. <laughs> That's it, just fold. How do you guys like that wrist fold action I've got there? Isn't that fantastic? That is 10 years of folding practice on display for you there. So now he started limping, which is a a definite uh, benefit to us starting limping. You know, he, maybe this is not the type of, maybe this is the player that always limps, and that's definitely possible, but it's also possible that we have encouraged it by being the first one to limp, which I'm very happy with given that I think we have a post-flop advantage. I'm going to check call here once. Uh, I'm not yet convinced that King High isn't the best hand. We certainly could be behind, and I don't plan on calling twice, despite he might be he might be betting draws here and stuff like that, and our hand is too weak to continue. But I feel like against this player, there's a shot that if he just has, like, you know, 5-6 offsuit, he just gives up on the turn, and we probably win at showdown, much like the hand we had King Deuce and he had King Queen. All right, so we've reached the point in the tournament that we're likely going to be all in or folding most times, but not this time. I think we can still min-raise this one more time here and uh, get away from it if he shoves. We could have argued just to fold, but I think this is profitable to just min-raise. Maybe, uh, maybe I could have just mucked this one, though. I don't think it's... I wouldn't have shoved it, but maybe we should have just uh, folded that. 
I might have been slightly losing, but you have to realize that it's not like when I say slightly losing. I mean we put in we put in 800 chips. Do we what's the, what's the expected return on our min raise? You know he's going to still fold a lot of the time. Maybe he shoves a little bit too much for us to be profitable with that, but I think it's got to be okay. Jack six here certainly going to be all in, risking 3600 to win, you know 675 or whatever it is. Yeah, 675, 650, 650, I think. I think, yeah, 25 ante, so. All right, pretty good hand here, and he min raises too. If he had shoved, it would have been close, but I think against the min raise, I think we just shoved. We could also argue calling, but I think he is capable of min raise folding. We haven't seen him, uh, I, I think it's fine. Even if he calls, we've got we've got decent equity, and I think he, we, had, we do have fold equity on top of all this, so we're all in. All right, we've... Uh, Two in a row, two in a row for the good guys. Actually, we could do it the bad guys because uh, <laughs> somebody somebody tweeted at me. I think we tried min raising this again, even though we got punished the last time we min raised it. And maybe he's a little frustrated. I actually think this was probably silly. This was a little too ambitious on my part. I just felt that we were on a heater. You know, you can't be on a heater if you fold. But uh, I was saying that the we've been talking about being the good guys, and then somebody came up with the relatively brilliant hashtag of summer villains, <laughs> which I had never heard before. Actually, I think uh, I think that was actually uh, super fan Rory Rory McDonald was the one that came up with super with summer villains. So we can be the bad guys with a hashtag like that. How could we not be, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna try limping here. You know, I mean. You guys, having seen all my hands, have seen that I've only limped weak, but he doesn't know that at this point, and uh, I would limp some relatively strong hands there as well. Going to have to call a min-raise in position, of course. That is not the best flop when you have 6-7 offsuit. However, there's a chance you just check folds. Doesn't look like that's happening this time, though, so we just will fold that ourselves. Blinds will be going up to 300, 600 in a minute, so we're going to have to be shoving wider on our button when it comes back around to us because we need them. We need them chips. Uh, could argue shoving here, but our hand is so bad. I think I'd rather just check, see a flop, try to make a pair, and then probably check raise all in. I mean, it sucks if he has a queen or a jack. We're just dead. I mean, not dead, but he checks back. Turn being a 10 is interesting. I think I'm still going to end up check calling here. I mean, if he has a 10, we're obviously in just as bad of a shape as if he had either of his other two cards. I think we can still call here. He has nines, kings. You know, I don't think he's too strong. He limped pre. He'd probably bet flop if he had a queen or a jack. He's betting pot now, so it's hard for him to have a 10 too often. Uh, seven is not a bad card for us. If we were ahead, we probably are still ahead. One of the problems here is that we are not that strong, and we don't look that strong. So we do get bluffed. We do get you know bluffed here sometimes, but we do ship this here, which is nice. We needed it. We needed it. Jack deuce on the button. Blinds are about to go up. Uh, I think we're just going to fold at this point. I mean, I wanted a min raise, but every time we've min raised, I mean, sample size, admittedly, he's just jumped on us. So I let that one go. King nine suited here is going to be too good to fold if he shoves. Certainly against the min raise, we're still going to be shoving. Our hand is just too good. If our hand was like king six offsuit, maybe we would just fold. But our hand is too good to do anything besides shove. There's a chance he folds, which would be great. And if he calls, we're not, can't be in that bad of a shape. Unless he has. We're rarely in that bad of shape. <laughs> Surely sometimes we're in bad shape, but all right. Two to one chip lead with the button. I'm all in, dealer. I play all my chips. All right. Big increase for us. Picked up that six hundred without showdown is obviously pretty nice. Ten seven offsuit. If he shoves, we might have to call. Alright, don't have to sweat it. This is good. Every one of these folds is so big for us because it gives us another shot to win an all-in because he's shorter and shorter stacked, so we have a couple more opportunities to, to, to break him. All right. Good for us. Definitely will be calling his all-in here if he shoves because he's only got two big blinds now. And we've got a suited king, so it's not the worst spot to do it. All right. Run it, boys. Run the cards. Just the nuts. Just the nuts. Oh, we did it. The victory. Team Run It Up. Our very first Run It Up. Oh, that's good. Run It Up post sponsorship, you know? The the ultimate the ultimate Run It Up challenge. <laughs> All right. Look at that. That is fantastic. What did we have What did we start today with? What did we win ultimate poker? Wow, $100. That is fantastic.
Uh, all right, so we had two, one, five. Let's put this over on the table here. We had one, two, one, five, four, six to start the, the day today, and the buy-in for this was exactly twenty-five dollars, and we made a hundred dollars. So look at that. Who even needs two hundred ninety dollars and forty-six cents? What are we buying with all this money? Wow, we are rich. <laughs> we are, we are doing it, kids. Two nine zero. 46. Look at that. That is fantastic. $290.46. That is great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed playing this video. So <laughs> it's always nice when you win. You know, what can you say? Poker. It's great, especially when you win. So uh, I had a good time. Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this video. I'll be back with more. Um, not sure what, but probably run it up because, hey, we're on a heater. You know, can't win more money unless you're playing. So got to get in there. All right. I'll be back with more tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys soon. Peace.